Here you are in the NFC playoffs. 49ers, they're the lowest remaining seed. They're going to Lambeau. Bucks will get the winner of the Cards and the Rams. That'll be Monday night, and that will be your final four in the NFC. You know who you don't see there? Dallas. They're done with the loss. Here's their head coach, Mike McCarthy, after. Um, the communication that I was given on the sideline, that uh, they were reviewing it. They were going to put, you know, time back on the clock and um, the next thing I know that uh, they're running off the field so that's that's all that's the only facts I have for Did you go to New York to review or that's was the only thing I got for you you know you were told that you were told they're put, going to put time yeah, back on the clock put, they're gonna put time back on the clock Mike you, you won a Super Bowl at this stadium and, and Jerry brought you in here to win this kind of game what do you say to your fans and, and they were booing out there they're, they're clearly just well, our fans were, I thought our fans were tremendous today. Um, I thought the environment here was incredible. Um, you know, I, I know there was talk about their fans, but I thought our fans were, were outstanding uh, throughout the, you know, you could, you could feel it in pregame. So, uh, yes, but uh, I know they're disappointed, uh, but, you know, we're disappointed too. We, we, we put a tremendous amount into this. Uh, we clearly felt that, you know, uh, you, you know, this is a game you have to get, you have to get the first one, obviously, you know, being captain, obvious, but the first one, in my experience, is always the hardest one, uh, especially when it's your first time through. I, I thought we were a little, you know, a little jittery in some spots to start the game, uh, but I, I felt once we, once we settled in, um, you know, it was a, it, it was a heck of a contest. So we, we knew it was going to be back and forth. Uh, they definitely had some stress points that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, gave us some uh, challenges throughout the game. But, you know, once again, I'm, I'm proud of where our football team competed. I number of penalties were problematic, but I want to ask you about a specific one. The delay of game after the successful fake punt, can you walk me through the procedure as to how that came about? Well, you talking about the fake punt? After that. Yeah, they, they, you know, so we hit the stop, and then we had a turbo play called. We were, we were going to go line up and run another play. It was, so it was a two-play series set that was, was called their own fourth down. Um, I think we had a player step on the field in celebration. They recognized that as this was, I was told afterwards, as we were trying to substitute, because obviously we, we didn't substitute because we lined up immediately. So then it hit the confusion of, uh, you know, uh, them resetting it, you know, based on substitution, not substituting. So then they reset the clock. So then we went to offense, you know. And then, and frankly, I thought that we were clearly, you know, once again standing over the ball. Uh, I think that there's been games where you don't get much um, standing over the ball when when there's a personnel uh, challenge, but uh, I think they overdid a little bit today. So they're obviously conscious about it. We talked about it pregame. I think both teams were probably worried about the no huddle tempo type offices because it was clearly clearly a uh, a focus of the umpire. Mike, why run that last play with the risk involved? I'm sorry? With so little time left, 14 seconds and no timeouts, could you weigh the risk of uh, having Dak run the ball in the middle of the field? And weigh the risk? Oh, no, I, I have no problem with the call. It's a, we, it's a, it's, we call the situation a church, you know, church, church clock situation. We're in a, we're, we're, you know, this is something we, we practice every Friday and Saturday. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get inside the 20 yard line. We, we, we want the last play to, to come down to you know, it would have been some form of five vertical uh, pass concept. So we had to set, you know, based on which you know where we were going to be, you know, in the final yardage here. So, yeah, um, based on you know being that tight, 14 seconds, you know, we we should clearly get the ball spiked there. And um, you know, I haven't seen the replay. You, I'm sure you have, uh, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm surprised. I was shocked as anybody on offense that we didn't get to that last play. In general, 14, sorry, in general, 14 penalties in this game. It was obviously an issue with penalties all season long with where you guys ranked in the league with that. Is this an undisciplined football team? I wouldn't say we're undisciplined. Uh, I think the, the fact that, you know, the, the physicality, you know, when, when, it's, when it's weighed, uh, you know, you know, when you, you're, you're trying to get your team to play to a, a certain play style, you know, there, there's definitely some growing pains that we, we've gone through. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and go through the officiating. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think it, you know over the, over the long haul, you you hope it balances out. Um, you know, I, I thought I thought they would let these teams play today, um, but you know that's that's for them to answer, and, and I'm sure they'll be they'll be uh, they'll have their comments on how they felt the game was officiated. What did you tell your players after the game? Because like you said, you did a lot of good this year, but you weren't able to, to get through this game. Uh, I was abrupt, you know, such an abrupt finish because I, I, I you know we, we clearly felt that uh, you know this was the challenge that we need to. 
we, you know, we were going to be able to, um, you know, move on from here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I just shared my personal feelings uh, to them. Mike, you know that the quarterback gets a lot of blame and a lot of credit, and, and Dak Prescott will obviously have his critics. What's the fair way to judge him after a loss like this? Oh, I think, you know, number one, you got to look at the whole body of work. Um, you know, there's you know, obviously a tremendous amount of good that uh, went on this year to even put us in this position. So um, it's uh, it's definitely a team that's that has balance, you know, from a personnel standpoint. I mean, we've, you know, we've got two draft classes that are, uh, you know, in the draft and develop mode. And, and I feel like we've done, we've made some big steps there. Um, and, you know, and we got an excellent veteran group. So uh, I, I think like anything, this is, this is going to sting for a long time. Um, this is not really the time for, you know, moving forward conversations. You know, I, I I understand that. Um, so, but um, I'm damn I'm damn proud of Des- Dak Prescott, and I'm, and I'm super happy he's our quarterback. You talk about the sting, right? And you've been through this many times before, but like you said, this is your first time through with the Cowboys. Your first time since that year off after Green Bay that you took to reflect. Does this hurt differently than other times? It hurts more. I mean, it definitely hurts more. You, you know, the longer you're in this league, you understand that these, the, the, the being in this position is, is, is very hard to is very hard to accomplish. I mean, there's you know, you think about what we went through as a football team, and um, you know, just you know, we had a tremendous amount of change from last year. Last last year was was uh, whew, was a hard, very difficult year, and uh, you know, and I talked about this last night in the team meeting. I mean, I can't <laughs> say enough about a football team in today's climate of you know. The COVID and, and, and you know, restrictions of players and time at the you know at their at their facility. Uh, th- these guys, you know, they've been going strong since February. You know, captains' workouts and everything. So there's a tremendous amount that's gone into the culture in in the, in the locker room in, in the way this group has come together. And I'm proud of that. I'm damn proud of it. And I know they are. Uh, but we're hey, we're just disappointed as hell. Uh, this is a game we expected to win. Um, you know, like I said, we. You know, felt this was going to come down to to the fourth quarter at the end. You know, because that's what he's. You know, history tells you that, and um, and we 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 didn't get it done. So, uh, so for that, you know, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it, um, and then when the time comes, we'll we'll start the journey. You know, for for next year. But uh, you know, there's there's been a lot that's been accomplished. You know, you think about the personnel change, the coaching changes, and so forth. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of good. Mike, should Dak have handed the ball to the umpire in that situation and not to Tyler? That's part of it. Uh, but the biggest thing is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an either or the training is. And we, I mean, we even talk about where, where to swat the ball, you know, as far as putting it right on the line. So, I mean, these are mechanics that are practice and so forth. I, I haven't seen the replay uh, to see. I, I know there's a collision between the umpire and Dak. So I know that was time consuming in that. Uh, but as far as the tempo, the 14 seconds, you know, where we were trying to get, you know, getting that thing, getting the clock, you know, above the two seconds, you know, I, I felt that our mechanics were, were in order. So uh, that, that's what I felt watching it live. What's the final count on the clock where you say, okay, you can run this play and still have time to get up and spike it? Is 14 the minimum? Or do you go well, less I mean, there's, there's, uh, we, we call them thresholds and, you know, the field position, what yard line you're at and what you're trying to get to, too, based on, you know, defense that they're trying to, the, the defense that they were playing, they were in the sideline defense, so they were protecting the sidelines. And so that was the best option to, you know, to be able to get the ball. I mean, it's it's like anything else. Do you, do you want to be running the Hail Mary play from the 50-yard line or do you want to be running five verticals from the 25-yard line? So that's the decision. It's the right decision. Um, you know, it's just like anything. It's you know the, the execution between us and the officiating spot in the ball obviously wasn't in tune wasn't you know we shouldn't have had any problem getting the ball spotted there I'll, I'll just if that's is that the quote you're looking for so. <laughs> mike when you said it was communicated to you that it would be the clock would reset well was just, that by know, the you alternative have, you know, it's working and you know his understanding is that the they, alternative you're correct and uh, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not here you know i don't want to see him Tony's a hell of a guy, so, um, but yeah, I think his understanding was they were going to look at it, and because mm-hmm. I think we all felt, I know on our sideline that the ball was clocked in time. Mike, did Randy tell you what he did on the defensive holding call or tackle? Or? I saw the replay. You know, uh, you know I, I think like anything, you know, there's players that have tendencies going into the game, and and um, and that was a tendency that, that you know. 
we were aware of, they were aware of, and, and it worked out for them. So, you know, uh, defensive holding, that's a, that's a different call right there. Mike, there were a couple of questions asked to Jerry Jones, both directly about your future as well as about overall coaching preparedness in this football game. To each of those questions, he basically said, I don't even want to go there. Do you have any concerns about your future with this organization? I don't have any concerns. I'm proud to be standing here today. Proud of my football team. Do you have a chance to talk to Jerry after the game yet? Uh, briefly, yeah, just briefly. Him, Steve, and everybody's in the, in the locker room with the players. The start of the game. I, I apologize if you asked this earlier. What, this, the slow start. What, why do you think that has been something that's kind of well came up today? Well, I mean, I, you know, offensively, you know, we had a hard time getting in the rhythm there. I, th I think the, uh, you know, the timing of the penalties. I think they obviously stopped some drives, and you know, you don't want to be in long D and Ds. Um, you know, with, with this defensive front, you know, so that, that definitely didn't didn't help us any. But I think, you know, once our guys settled into the second half, we, you know, it, it, we knew it was going to be a challenge game. It, we knew it was going to be choppy. And, um, you know, yeah, when we watched it, we're all we're going to wish that we executed better. But, you know, it uh, just wasn't quite good enough today. Good? Thank you. Thank you. All right, here you go. Longest active streaks without a conference championship game appearance. I mean, you have futility with the Bengals, the Browns, the Lions. I mean, and the Cowboys are on that list. I mean, Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith, that's a long time ago. More than a quarter century. And it's not going to happen this year either. Dallas goes down. They lose at home to San Francisco. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.